Welcome back, everybody, to Caravan of Garbage, where we are making our way through five superhero properties that are loosely connected in the sense that they didn't do very well. Mm. Also, some of them are pulp icons, sort of, but not all of them. And most of them, but not all, are from the 30s. It's the superhero-ish series. <laughs> it's superhero-ish, you know it when you see it. Exactly. I think I might have found a link, though, after watching this movie. Go on. The Shadow. Yes, The Shadow, sure. 1994, The Shadow, directed by Russell Mulcahy. Oh, do you want to reveal it later? No, I'll do it now. Oh, can't be that good if you want to reveal it up top. <laughs> no, no, let's let's give people something. Let's okay, get, they've earned it, I think. Okay, you take a chance on a video. That's so true. So first of all, they leave a like on this video for oh, this. Also, first of all, leave a like, and then you're going to reveal the thing that's not good enough to save to the end. Yeah, right, yeah, yeah. Right. That's right. Yeah, right. exactly. Right. Maybe it's Tommy guns. Maybe there has to be a Tommy gun. Tommy scene. guns, but I don't think there's going to be Tommy guns in the fifth one we talk about. Mm. I don't think there's going to be any. There so. is that retro vibe. If anybody mm. can find a definitive link, and not something vague. Yeah. I mean, like, give us something. You know, something symbolic. Yeah. That we could put on like an award, and we could give the worst one an award. So it's thus far, it's the Tommy gun award for standing in the street and spinning around slowly and shooting at cars. <laughs> That's what it is currently. Exactly. Which isn't a lot, but it's weird that it happened twice, right? Now this one, I think, definitively exists in the wake of the Batman movies. Yeah, absolutely. The Tim Burton Batman movies. They went. They made a billion dollars. Yep. Not really, but you know, adjusted maybe. I don't know. <laughs> a billion's a big number. I just wanted to say a billion. All right. <laughs> they made a ton of money and they went. Let's do something Batman-esque. Yeah. Alec Baldwin was probably like, I was offered Batman, mm, probably, like yeah. everybody was, and decided not to do it. I'll, I'll do yeah. the shadow. Yeah. Well, we also know that Bob Kane, who invented... Invented. Bob Kane, who had a hand in Batman, yes. has talked about the influences of the shadow Bill on Finger Batman. had a much bigger hand in Batman, as we all know. <laughs> but it just... Not great though, right? I don't mind it. I, I, don't I know. like... See, I, here's the thing. I, I think I like the shadow more than you do. Mm hmm like as a character as a character and I think I like the origin of the character and I like his stuff in subsequent media and I've even listened to the old radio show and stuff like that but I don't think this does any of that justice no you know what it is look I think it's two things I think one I like Alec Baldwin's performance I mm -hmm. think he, he's a good straight man in this role like in 30 Rock he delivers an odd line yeah. with a certain sincerity that I appreciate you are a barbarian. But I think that this character, they weren't sure if he was supposed to be charismatic and, and, a, and a real nice guy or a lunatic or somewhere in the middle or if he switches depending on his persona or what have you. Depending on the nose he was wearing. Yeah, and I think the, the character comes off as more of a kind of a mess. Yes, and vague. And vague. And I also think in, in a similar vein, I think they didn't really know what they wanted to do with this movie. Did they want it to be lighthearted? Did they want it to be more sort of campy, grim like Batman? There's some moments in this with Alec Baldwin and uh, Penelope Ann Miller where it, it seems like they want it to be like a kind of 1930s, 1940s screwball comedy where mm. they're doing the fast dialogue like his girl Friday where they're like snappy and back and forth and they've got a real fun kind of run to it. We need each other. No, we don't. We have a connection. No, we don't. It almost feels like they're going to carry it off at certain points, but there's so little of that Yeah. that I'm like, if you'd, if you'd made the whole movie like that, could have worked. Maybe I would have loved it. Mm. But I do appreciate like the weird stuff that's in this. For example, the opening sequence, we have a shirtless Alec Baldwin in black genie pants. <laughs> sure, he's yes. He's got pointed nails and he's got a long black wig. Yes. And in all of that, he's fighting like a little cranky knife. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wonderful stuff, really. <laughs> and it's one of those things where it's like, what are we bearing witness to here? What is this What is mm. this telling us about the, the state of cinema? But I will say this, I appreciate that, look, this was an era where you don't have to work out that much. Mm -hmm. You don't have to manicure your chest hair. Or like, your nails, evidently. Or your nails, yeah. And more power to him, quite frankly. Bring this back, mm. if you possibly could. But I also knew that after that intro where it's like he's a warlord and then, you know, a, a deity found him or whoever or a guru and was like, you should be a good guy. And then mm. there's the crawl. Yes. Yeah, and you know something's up there where, like, maybe you've botched the origin of this. Oh, we should point out, I guess, he's a bad guy. Yes. And so he's trained in mystical arts so he can use his bad guy energy to look into the minds of other bad guys mm -hmm. whilst mostly being a good guy. Yeah, sure. Is that accurate? Yes. So a lot of that is new to the movie. Like a lot of uh, pulp heroes, a lot like Dick Tracy, mm. we talked about a couple of weeks ago, his initial appearances... He's just like, I think I'm going to fight crime, to be honest. Mm. Like, the, the idea that he once was a, a villain 
That's that's new to the movie. How much shadow backstory would you like, James? What do you got? Well, we can cut it all out. Okay, here's the backstory of the shadow. You want to you you want a potted history of the shadow? Let's that we do can, it. We can very easily cut out of the the video version. <laughs> so in 1930, there was a there was a pulp magazine called Detective Story Magazine, and it did mystery stories and crime stories and detective stories, etc. And they thought a great idea to increase sales of the magazine would be to start a radio show where they did like dramatic readings of the stories, yeah. which was called Detective Story Hour. So what they did. To tie all the stories together is they decided they'd create a, a, like a narrator to introduce the stuff. And so they came up with a guy called The Shadow who had like a like a raspy, sinister voice. And he would, he would introduce the stories and he'd be like, and that's why crime doesn't pay. I'm a shadow. Exactly like The Shadow. And so sales did go up, but it also had the unintended consequence that people would constantly go up to like newsstands and be like, where are these shadow stories? Uh, like, where yeah. are they? I'll burn your newsstand down. It was the 30s. And so the editors of the magazine were like, well, we should probably invent iconic pulp character The Shadow, I guess, <laughs> Spot if we have to. And so they got a guy called Walter B. Gibson to create like the iconic look of the shadow mm. and I love the look the premise and he, you know he's going to you know be in New York and fight crime and put terror in the hearts of criminals and etc so they released the shadow magazine yeah which sold great guns and over the next 20 years there were 325 shadow stories in the magazine and Gibson wrote 282 of them which works out to a novel length story twice a month my God. Once on the first of the month, once on the 15th of the month, and he just churned them all out. Damn. But anyway, people really love They're it. They're quite good, though, aren't they? No. Oh. No, some of them are. It's a mixed bag. I, mean, I mean, I know you like some of them. Yeah, yeah. Least, but, yeah. But anyway, and then eventually that resulted in an actual, like a like a full cast recording of Shadow Stories on the radio. Like, he yes. got his own radio show again, but this time he, he wasn't just a narrator. He was like... I like the idea of them not being like, this is the next big thing. We've created this thing. It grew kind of organically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Until they made the movie and then it stopped. <laughs> put, a, put a real full stop. But all the all the, uh, all the the elements were there that people liked in the 30s yeah. through to the 50s. Uh, Margot Lane was invented for the radio show. Mm -hmm. And that is primarily because the shadow was a man and the commissioner was a man and all the gangsters were men. And I think they were like, well, if we put in one more male voice, nobody will know who's talking. So they, <laughs> so, so the writers had a deep sigh and they went, oh, I guess we'll write a woman. <laughs> Which I think that, that to me is fascinating because it's like the idea, I think maybe we've talked about on our podcast, The Weekly Planet, about how the first appearance of Kryptonite, Superman's Weakness, was on the Superman radio show. And depending on who you ask... That might have been because the uh, the show was put out live every week and the guy who played Superman wanted a couple of weeks off. So they had to go, oh, let's just invent a rock that makes him comatose or whatever. <laughs> just <laughs> What they also changed for the, the radio show is that they made it so the Shadow only had one secret identity. So in the original stories, yeah. his name's Kent Allard, mm -hmm. right? He was a, a flying ace in World War One. And then when he returns to New York, uh, he meets a guy called Lamont Cranston who looks a lot like him, who's like a, an idle playboy. So whenever Cranston is out of town, like on safari shooting giraffes or whatever. Or shooting Breaking Bad, go on. Exactly. Uh, oh, Cranston. Uh, yep. Uh, uh, yep. Whoop. Yep. Whoop. <laughs> Kent Allard would sub in for him and put on the tuxedo and be like, I'm Lamont Cranston. And he would, you know, infiltrate high society and he'd get information on the criminals or whatever. Sure. So in the radio show, they were just like, whatever, it's just, do we, do we have to explain this every time? Just, mm. It's just Lamont Cranston. And the third thing is that they added that he had mysterious powers. Yes. Because in the original, he's like a smoke bomb guy. Mm, like in the sure. pulp stories, he's just like, I've got a magician's trick and I'll do this or whatever. But clearly, based on all this stuff, clearly they went, folks, this is the fast-paced world of 1930s radio. No media landscape will ever be more hectic than this. We've got cigarettes and nerve tonics to sell. <laughs> we do not have time to introduce the concept. The villains are congregating in a warehouse and he's going to clamber up a fire escape and he's going to find a access hatch on the roof and then he's going to taunt and then he's going to leap down and he's going to gun them all down like a hero. We'll just say he's invisible and he's in the room with him. <laughs> yeah. And then he can gun him down like a hero. Yeah, absolutely. You know? And I think that's the problem with this movie for me is that his set of powers is very vague and sometimes they work and sometimes they don't and sometimes he's invisible and sometimes he's just standing in water. <laughs> Maybe right. you should be aware of that. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's at one point because he can turn invisible. Look, he can't strictly speaking turn invisible. He can cloud men's minds yeah, yeah, yeah. and make them think to them he appears invisible except for his shadow. Mm. Gotcha. And I women no. and non-binary people if he existed in the present day. <laughs> That's right, NBs. He'd be invisible to you too. You're not special. <laughs> I mean, I get all that. Yeah. But then you introduce a... A villain yes. who has roughly sort of yeah, the yeah. same thing. Oh, that's but one I... of them does it a little bit harder than the other. Oh, that's what I was going to say. So there is a moment where 
Uh, he's in a darkened room and a, and, a, and a bad guy puts his flashlight in him and the shadow's there. He, he can turn invisible except for his shadow, but then the, the, the villain puts the flashlight on him and he's there, just the shadow, and he just sort of like... Yeah. He just looks like a deer in the headlights. He just stands there frightened and gets shot a couple of times. And it's like, come on, man. But you're absolutely right. I quite like that they introduced a guy who has similar powers to him but he's kind of better than him. Yeah. But then the shadow just gets better than him. Exactly. Like for no reason. He doesn't reason. learn anything. He doesn't learn anything. He doesn't go, okay, well, the reason is that actually I was too angry or whatever. You know, often in yeah. the modern superhero landscape, it's like, well, I didn't value my family enough, but now I do value my family and, and that's given me the power to win or whatever. In this, he's mm. just like, boy, this guy's better at levitating cranky knives or whatever. <laughs> Maybe I'll be better at that. Yeah, and yeah. then he is. And then he is, exactly, yeah. But look, to talk about things that I did like, yes. I think the outfit is great. Hat, Terrific. cape, bandana, prosthetic face. He looks like Billy Baldwin. He does look like Billy Baldwin. <laughs> That's a different Baldwin. This is young Baldwin, and he looks like some of his younger brothers did yes. 10 years ago. <laughs> but I think the prosthetic is not good up close. Yeah, I understand. And I fun. get that they kind of wanted to really distinguish the two, mm -hmm. but I think the outfit is enough. Absolutely, yeah. But, you know, I like the way that he kind of runs the city. You know, he rescues that guy at the start, mm -hmm. and then he's like, listen, you're going to work for me. I've got a network of, mm. of spies. You have no choice. I might kill you. Yeah. You don't know. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I'm really mean to you, but I'm a nice guy. I'm charming, but I'm mean, but I just I just boss you around. <laughs> What's my deal? I don't know. <laughs> you tell me. But I'll, don't. I'll kill you. <laughs> Will I? Here's a ring. <laughs> Show everyone the ring, but never take it off. <laughs> I love that how he's you know he, he tells he tells him how it works in the network of spies and he's like see you later whatever your name is and the guy's like how did you know my name and it's like he just told you he had a network of spies yeah, yeah. he probably looked into you he didn't just recruit you randomly idiot come on I think there's some really interesting effects in this. We talked about the cranky knife. It doesn't always hold up, but that's the thing that I remember. <laughs> exactly. The, look, ultimately, even though the villain is Shiwan Khan, who's a, who's a villain from the Pulps originally, mm. the real villain is the cranky knife because he's like the school bully because <laughs> yeah. he goes to the Temple of the Cobra and he meets the, the bully who pushes him around mm. clearly. Then he, you know, he gets a real glow up and he moves to the big city and then all of a sudden the cranky knife is back. <laughs> and he's like, no, not the cranky knife. I'm going to get swirly. No cranky knife. <laughs> But he stood up for himself. That's true. Like you do with a bully. Maybe that's what it is. Yeah, maybe it is, yeah. But I think, yeah, look, not all the effects hold up. But no. There's like a swirling kind of 3D tapestry at one point. Mm -hmm. There's some smoke effects like at night that are, that are quite good. There's a bit where he kind of peels himself out of a shadow at one point where he's pinned. There's one point where he peels his entire face off. Oh, yeah. And he's the other guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's the other guy, isn't he? I was speaking... Yeah, yeah, yeah. And look, and speaking of, there's two great lines that I love from, from Alec Baldwin in this. And one of them is he explains to Margot Lane that he, he had a dream where he pulled his own face off. I dreamed I tore all the skin off my face and was somebody else underneath. <laughs> but then there's the moment where Shiwan Khan reveals the cranky knife and he goes, oh, that knife. Oh, that knife. <laughs> you remember that bit? <laughs> yes, I love I that bit. Yeah. And here's the thing, right? This era of Alec Alec Baldwin, aside from those little moments that you're talking about, I'm not really into it. Okay, right. If you get me up to like the departed 30 Rock, 100%, I'm in. The moment in uh, Mission Impossible Fallout where he talks about how Ethan Hunt is the <laughs> yeah. living manifestation of destiny. Yes. It's delivered with the same gravitas of, oh, that knife. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, yeah. But the end I wasn't really wrapped in. I mean, this was always going to end in a hall full of mirrors. I didn't know that, but I knew, you know? Mm. Which one is he? Whatever, it's a mirror. There's, sure, there's sure. mirrors okay, happening. Yeah. And, and it's vague. It's like, I'm going to explode all these mirrors better than you or mm. whatever. Yeah, you really. can't run from me. Shout out to the score, Jerry Goldsmith. He also okay. did The Omen, Rambo, Star Trek, The Motion Picture, Planet of the Apes. We never talk about scores. No, we never do. But That's this true. Is, I feel like this is a really good one. Anything else to say before we do some trivia? Yeah, well, look, I, the supporting cast is great. Mm -hmm. That most, most of whom I didn't even remember were in this. Peter Boyle is in this. Uh, yep. If, if you were to ask me which cast member from Lord of the Rings was in the movie The Shadow, I might have said young Viggo Mortensen as a thug or something. Oh, yeah. But it's uh, bloody, it's only bloody, uh, it's only bloody... Patrick Stewart. No, it's not Patrick Stewart. Ian McKellen. <laughs> Ian McKellen, thank you. And Tim Curry's in this. Tim Curry's in this. As just also, a, yeah. the oiliest, I was going to say one of the oiliest men he's ever played, but I can't make that promise, no. honestly. Yeah, an oily man that he has played. How about yes, that? That's, can that's, you commit to that? I can commit to that. That <laughs> right. is perfect. I think everybody in this is, is doing a good job as well. Yeah. Anyways, it's time for the trivia, though. We talk about I don't get it. shadow related trivia. Oh, not the chat trivia? No. Oh. What are you 
Did you not hear me when I said the oh, trivia dough? Oh, I'm stupid. Yeah, you are stupid. But don't let that stop you from helping me finish this video. I don't want to do this by myself. Okay. okay. I'll get lonely. I'll get lost. I've got this haunted knife <laughs> that could do it with you. <laughs> How crazy. Yeah. Oh, God. I don't like it. Why are you doing these videos, James? I oh, just, I don't know. It's like my job now, all right? I used to have a real job now. This is my job. What do you care? Nobody's going to watch these. They do, though. Like, for now. Even these ones? Yeah, yeah somewhat. Interesting. Is it? I don't know. <laughs> What do you know about media? Nothing. I only know about stabbing. Then shut the fuck up. Sorry. I don't tell you about stabbing. Uh, so the director of this is Russell Mulcahy, who you mentioned. He directed Highlander, most That's famously, right. probably. And second Highlander, sort of. Mm. He claims that they fucked that. And they did. <laughs> yeah. But before that, Sam Raimi actually wanted to make this, but his pitch was ignored. So he turned the ideas of what he wanted this to be, and he created Darkman. There it is, yeah. And you can definitely see that in the costume, Similarities right? are, uh, are, are quite obvious there, yeah. And Darkman is better by a, a, a wide margin. It is better, yeah. Sam Raimi would have killed this man yeah, if they I've, let him. I think there was even going to be, even after this, I think maybe in the 2000s, there was going to be a version, again, set with Sam Raimi attached, where he was going to combine, going to team up the Shadow with, like, Doc Savage and the Avenger, who's, you might not know, but he's a, he's got a malleable face. Yeah, sure. Uh, like, they were going to put them together in an Avenger-style team, but I think the, the rights have since lapsed. So. Well, that's sad. Yeah, mate. yeah. Don't you think? I don't think you're sad at all. No, I'm not. Oh, no. Yeah, you read that well, actually. I'm a good judge of character. I don't think you are. Maybe one day you'll be able to control me, the cranky knife. I'm actually... Not today, though. Stab! <laughs> oh, God. I, I deserve that, I guess. Yeah! <laughs> I think you've got to stab me no matter what, though, if I'm honest. He's right. He's not wrong. <laughs> I love stabbing. <laughs> uh, a video game version of The Shadow for the Super Nintendo was developed to time with the film, but it was never released despite being completed due to the film's disappointing box office gross. Now, you can get this. It's been emulated or whatever since, but that's surprising they didn't just release it anyway. Yeah. You know, I can't imagine it would cost that much, would it? Who knows, man? Yeah, who knows? Anyway, play it if you want. Apparently, it's pretty standard. Oh, is it some sort of action platformer on the Super Nintendo? Yeah, you heard of it? They're absolute bread and butter at the time. Yeah, yep, yep, yeah, yep. yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Banyan from Seinfeld is in this. Oh, yeah. He's one of the guards. I was <laughs> like, right. I know him. I know that yeah, face. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I love this. So, the villain in this, whatever his name is. Shiwan Khan. Yeah. Claims that he's Genghis Khan's last remaining ancestor, mm -hmm. uh, which is off by quite a few million people. So an international group of geneticists studying Y chromosome data have found that nearly 8% of the men living in the region of the former Mongol Empire carry Y chromosomes that are nearly identical. That translates to roughly 0.5% of the male population in the world, or roughly 16 million descendants living today. Oh. He was a root rat, mate. Do you think we might be descendants of uh, Genghis Khan? I don't know. Ask your knife friend. Unlikely. <laughs> All right. Thanks, knife. <laughs> I don't think you know, but thank you, I guess. Uh, I'm just here to stab and shatter dreams. Yep. We know. Uh, the budget of this, $40 million. Okay. I imagine uh, Alec Baldwin's salary was a significant portion no of that. No doubt. Well, you know, he was Jack Ryan for a couple of movies or one movie. That's I can't right. remember. And various other things. But it ended up only making at the worldwide box office $48 million. Oh, that's Big not bomb. a lot more. I'd imagine that this was a situation that was confusing for the movie studio with they're like, what you, we just, we did Batman. We did the guy they based Batman off. Right? Isn't that enough? Yeah. No, it has to be better, less vague, please. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Look, honestly, I thought it was interesting. Yeah. But I, I can't say that I, I loved it. Too vague. The characters weren't defined well enough. I think they should have leaned into, they again, I think they should have picked a personality for this guy. Mm. You know what I mean? I think, or like shown as a better illustration of his struggle. Yeah. You know what I, you know what I mean? Exactly. Well, I, I don't know, but I still kind of liked it because I liked the derangement of the character. I liked the fact that he clearly, like the character is leaning yeah. towards like... Psychopathy? Yeah, just but like justice at any cost kind of thing. Yeah, okay, you know what sure. I mean? If people would like to uh, track down some, perhaps some shadow media... No. Nah. No, no, I know. For the one guy. Okay. I'm talking to me, <laughs> but I've read this already. There were a couple of Batman shadow crossovers in the that comic books fun. through DC and Dynamite comics, uh, and they're both good, uh, but the first one by Scott Snyder and Steve Orlando is called Batman and the Shadow, the Murder Geniuses. And if that title doesn't uh, doesn't intrigue you, I don't, I don't know what else I can do. This series really leans into the Shadow has been doing it too long and he's gone mad. Oh, and, okay. And sort of imagine like the intensity of Batman, but times 100. Yeah. Like he's been doing it for nearly 
a century and, mm. and he's and he's lost his objectivity and he's just like, yeah, if I have to kill 10 people to save a thousand, I'll do it. I don't care. <laughs> Whatever. That's pretty cool though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's yeah. pretty cool that he would do that. Yeah. Good, the greater good. I agree with this yeah. version of the shadow is what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. I, I think yeah. the knife would agree with that also. Yeah, I think so too. Uh, he's left though. Oh. But yeah, I, I don't know. I just like a nastier version of the shadow. Yeah. There's, there's also a shadow comic series from the 80s by Howard Chaikin called Blood and Judgment, which is also very kind of mm. nasty. Like, All right. It's quite violent and, and kind of dark, but, but uh, I enjoy it too. So, Do you think the knife would like it? I think the knife would like it. But the knife's not here anymore. No, he left. <laughs> he got in a cab. <laughs> so his flight is limited, is it? Yeah. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. You'd, you'd get tired, I guess. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, do you want to hit for next week? I think we already mentioned it, but here it is. The Phantom is real. We're going to slam evil. Yeah, man, we're going to slam evil. With the Phantom. That's right. Australia's own the Phantom. That's correct. But not really, but we claim him. He's ours. But he met Bob Hawke once. He did. Mm. That's cool. I bet the knife would think it was cool. But again, the knife is not here. It left. <laughs> I heard Bob Hawke drank a big yard glass. He had the record for drinking a yard glass of beer. You're back because you didn't have money for the cab. All right, you're right in this instance. <laughs> you got 20 bucks? Can I borrow 20 bucks? Yes. <laughs> Anyways, if you do want to see that video earlier, you can actually head over to bigsandwich.co where it's not just early videos. Do you know what else it is? Uh, let me think. It's uh, early videos. Yep. And it's a bonus podcast. Yep. And it's video game Let's Plays. Mm-hmm. And our podcast, The Weekly Planet, comes out on Sunday as opposed to Monday. Yep. Various movie commentaries. I believe it. Or you can just check out, you know, the stuff here or our podcast, The Weekly Planet, over on its YouTube channel, Spotify, Apple, all of that. Thank you so much, Ben and Lawrence, for the edit. Thank you, Ben and Lawrence. And we'll see you guys on the next one. Yeah. It's The Phantom, in case you didn't guess. Maybe the knife will come back. Maybe the knife will become our sidekick. <laughs> cool. An awful little knife. <laughs> oh, he's rolled up the $20. No, he's doing cocaine, Mason. <laughs> this is terrible news. <laughs> uh, grab that jammy, guys. We'll see you next week.